name is Ira Zibu and welcome to the first installment of our new series where we take a look at the labs at ICER TVM. Today I'm joined by Akshita Mittal as we interview Dr. Kalika Prasad. He's currently an associate professor at ICER Pune and before that was an associate professor at ICER TVM. He's also the principal investigator of his own lab, the Lab of Regeneration, that primarily focuses on regeneration and developmental plasticity in plants. If you'd like to know more about Dr. Kalika's work and his lab, check out our article. The link's in the description. Let's get started. So you joined ICER TVM in 2010, right? Well, if I remember, I came in person 2011 January. That's how it was. Yeah, so that was almost like 10 years ago. That was a long time ago. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so at that time, you know, the institute was still really young and still a new thing. And so what was like your first day as a part of ICTVM like compared to your last day? So first day compared to the last day, okay? Yeah. Um, first day, I would say I was lost. When I entered, I never knew what to do. But last day made me a complete, just some sort of completion I, I feel. I feel that I felt that there was a lot that a meaningful um, stay, I could, would say, that that 10 years gave me immense uh, things to learn, lots to uh, self-interrogate. That is one more thing. And uh, after interacting with a bunch of amazing students and, you know, the colleagues around, it was entirely different. So last day was entirely different. I felt that it was a meaningful stay. However, the first day I was quite lost. I must say that. But having said that, the first day while I was lost, it was a full of excitement, right? A new things to be, I was not very much aware that what I'm going to take on and uh, what I'm going to start because we were new and not that much facilities and anything were in place. But one thing we were very excited that we have to do the best, whatever is the possible. So that kept me very, very exciting more and we kept going. But over the time, I became mature perhaps and learned a lot. So it gave me a feeling of accomplishment, yes. Well, my next question is, so what has been the most rewarding part of being a scientist so far? The most rewarding part being a scientist has been, you know, uh, to be part of a student's uh, unexpected observations in the lab, which they made it and you, I just become a part of them. And one of the most and most rewarding is to interact with the young kids daily on daily basis with their naive questions, with their obvious questions, which I could never imagine. And uh, they always uh, was, it. Every day when I was used to teach them or I was used to interact with them in the class, for me, I think each of those days were the most rewarding because of the very, very enthusiastic, curiosity-based question I encounter. And I attempt to answer, despite many of the questions were not even answered in the literature, we were used to get together to answer in some sort of very... Um, um, logical, whatever it could allow. So that was the most rewarding. Most rewarding was the students and their interactions. So as a professor and as the principal investigator in your own lab, you had to like juggle both research as well as teaching. So how did you focus on both of these things at you the see, same time? I, I never see research and teaching as a two separate exercise. For me, both are very much, they are, you cannot separate them if you, if you look at very carefully. Because what you teach and what you do research, they have a very a lot of similarities in the sense. When you teach at the time, 
So might be teaching the very same course. You learn over a time that you encounter a number of the new questions which allow you to think in a different direction in your own research it could be. Okay. And when you do research, you you understand that how each step needs to be taken carefully in terms of understanding. So when you go back to the class and teach even the established fact, there you try to try to put yourself in a student's shoes and then try to teach. So you see, both are very much, they are interconnected, I would say. And one of the reasons I truly enjoy teaching because I truly enjoy being the part of research and amazing observations. So for me, both of them are amazing. They cannot, I cannot uh, separate from each other. And that's why I like the ISA model, amazing, because you learn, you teach, you go to the class and go back and forth. So I would say going back and forth is the most important thing. And they are connected. By no means they are different. So I have always looked at uh, as the very much connected person. And well, answer to your question, both are equally enthusiastic. However, I must say that if I ask my own, that what made me always more enthusiastic is the teaching part. What was something unexpected you learned from your students as a professor? What, can you repeat this? What was something unexpected that you learned from your students as a professor? Well, unexpected that I learned from the students. Yeah. That's, let me think over it because there are multiple, but let me just give you the, well, something unexpected I would say that I learned uh, from the students is their perseverance, which I did not expect that at this young age, um, despite coming from a very, very different background, you know, even in my own lab, people walked in from an entirely different background. They never had those access to uh, best colleges, best universities, but when they walked in, they walked in Mala, um, they had no background of the subject. They had no background of anything what I would have expected. From there, when they started and their perseverance, when I was about to give up a few things, and I say it's going to be little, but it's going to take the way which is very, very difficult. They uh, showed the perseverance. They never gave up. And that was amazing, unexpected, because I never, if I would have been like a PhD student in place of them, then our researcher, I would have tried to, you know, corner some of the, some of the efforts which they put it in the research, uh, in the research. I have to say that that was unexpected. They never give up. Even till today, I say that, look, no problem, we can get away from this. Let's think about something easier. But till the last moment, they say, no, we did it finally. And that was always amazing moment. And I must say that when I had, a, I'm not going to name because each one of them, they come with their own beauty. And uh, therefore, I'm not going to be biased uh, with one uh, uh, versus other. But I must tell you that in general, I had a pleasantness to encounter this unexpected thing was that when we sent when we were used to send the paper and when it comes for the revision, when I, I say, okay, let's sit and let's do this experiment, many of the experiment during the revision, the students would have already finished it. That was very unexpected uh, uh, for me, very, very much unexpected. Yes. And finally, what is one piece of advice you would like to leave the students of ISER TVM with? Well, only one which I have given with multiple time. Do a science, never for your profession, 
never for your award, never for your career, and never to get some money. Just do science as a quest, a longing to know. If you are doing anything in science, then choose anything you like, which you like doing, even you cannot sleep without that, even in the weekends, you want to just rush to that. If you are truly have, you know, I would let me, I don't know whether I'm allowed or not, but let me tell this on this forum that in era of multiple information, which we keep getting from the internet and this and that, and we immediately get attracted, oh, this is the, this particular biology, this has a lot of attraction, a lot of uh, scope, you know, I would say that this is a kind of infatuation and I would strongly recommend not to develop that. I would say just wait and see whether you have deeply fallen in love with something, a question or something literally you want to do, just do it. Do in science whatever it takes, do what makes you joyful. Never do something for award, marks, grades, never. You will see that in terms, one day you will be the most successful. Second, though you asked me the one advice, but second, I'm taking liberty to take the second week, the second advice, which is very, very important. And I must give to this, this generation, which is, I feel it's my responsibility per se, is that never measure your success as compared to your another batchmates or as compared to your another colleagues that that has a number of grades, pointer, overall CTPA X, I have so on, I have these grades, I have that grades, he got admission in the Harvard University, I got admission in somewhere else. Your success is for measure of every day. You just measure, did I live today? Whatever you do, today you are doing interviewing me, or after some time you will do some other activities, just miss at the end of the day. Did you spend your day? Did you keep your 100% in each and every activity today you perform? And if you have, if you are convinced that you have given 100%, take my word, you are the most successful person. Compare whether you have given 100%, never compare with any other. Comparison should never be with any other for to measure the success. This you remember, and this I really, uh, I'm very hopeful that you guys will follow this. Otherwise, in today's era, the way people have been going for competition, going for this, I would strongly discourage it. It's killing the innovative science, you know, in terms of a search for a word, in terms of a search for some sort of... Um, and I can tell you, because I'm coming from the very same kind of class, uh, probably, again, this question is untouched, but I must hear a little bit elaborate, you know, you asked me first day about isotifian, but you did not ask me how I reached on the first day to my isotifian, right? And I must say that when I was in school days, the only thing I learned and only thing I knew that I have to read, I have to study, and I have to just get a marks the best ever possible. In that attempt, it happened, BSc, MS, still Masters, and I kept getting. I never, to best of my memory, I never stood second ever in my academic career. And in that, I could get fetching number of medals, this medals, that medals. Um, even till my PhD, I must say that, and you know, A plus, and this all grades, and then getting to the best medal. But you asked me, was that journey joyful? And now that when I became PI and decided I will never go for, never apply for any award, and I have never done that. That is one thing during my PI. I say I'm completely, I would enjoy the enthusiasm with the student, and I will not go for the award. Now you can ask me, which one you enjoyed most? Those days where you fetch half a dozen of gold medals and this and that, or you enjoy this journey, where you become a part of some sort of unexpected observation, a part of a very nice questions. Trust me, these 10 years were amazingly joyful without award versus those many years which were just full of awards and medals. Okay, so I would say 
I strongly recommend and my suggestion, humble suggestion and request to all of you is that do a science, number one, do a science as a quest, as a longing to know and follow your instinct, follow what you like the most, what makes you joyful, do it. And second, measure your success, just whether you have given 100% in what you have done. That's it. Okay. Yes, sir. So Any those other? were all the questions that we had. So thank you okay. for taking the time to answer our questions. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank and we you wish so you all much. the best. Right thank you Pune. so much. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you. Have a nice day. Again, I said that, you know, I always miss that um, because of this very strange times which we are going through, pandemic times. Um, I miss that one year somehow was always will be empty in my in my 10 years time, though I thoroughly enjoy that 10, those 10 years. Those 10 years are an amazing moment. I learned a lot, as I said, and uh, I grew in a different in a, in a different dimension. And but I will miss that one year where I could not interact with you guys and especially um, the basic courses, fundamental courses, which I love to interact. And uh, over a time, every batch with me, I have, um, it's not that I have taught, I have done a lot from you guys. And we grew together. I still remember, Ira's your questions and your immediate uh, attempt to answer it in a very biological way. <laughs> And I was used to come down your enthusiasm, hold on, because we have to take everybody together. But you guys were phenomenal. I enjoyed teaching even though online I was full on my own spirit. I just never gave up. And so you guys and uh, well, world is small and I look forward anytime you come here. Never ask me whether I can come and meet you just Pick up the number, call me and come, okay? Anytime. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank and you. All the best. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and would like to see more from Exhibit A, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments whose lab you'd like for us to cover next. Also, check out our blog website where we publish new articles every single month. Thank you.